Okay, hello everyone. Um, so this is an update from the last video that I did. Um, and in the last video, what you saw was a, the queen with a number of pupae and about four workers at the time. Four callow workers, young, young, uh, young workers. So here we have about, I didn't do a total hug count, but about ten workers now. And uh, I figured at this stage they'd be ready to move to a larger enclosure that you can see over there. Because these workers have been kind of picking at the cotton end here of my test tube setup. So I think they're ready to to expand and, and uh, adventure forth. So we'll, we'll, uh, I'll move them over. Uh, but before I do that, and I'll show that in the video, I, I just wanted to show you what, what they're moving from. So this is what's called a... Uh, a test tube setup and so the first step you usually need to engage in is you need to um you need to find a queen to even uh begin your colony uh and so how you do that is usually what you do is you'd uh look up the ant species in your area and then determine when when their nuptial flight would be and the nuptial flight is essentially when the uh the males uh mate with the queens the the queen females uh, and fertilize them. And following a nuptial flight, the queen will then start wandering, looking for a place to start her nest to, uh, to start a new colony. And so you can usually find the queens at, at different, uh, depending on the species, different times of the year. Uh, this Tetramorium species E, which is found here in Michigan, um, usually have their nuptial flights around late, mid to late July. So that's when I picked this one up here. Um, and so essentially I just picked her up, put her in a small container and then set up what this is called a test tube setup. And, uh, it's pretty easy to set up. So you just get a, um, get a test tube of some sort or a small container like it, and then fill up one end with water. Uh, any water will do. I just actually use tap water. I don't know if that's recommended, uh, but that seemed to uh, sustain them just fine. So I'd fill up about halfway with t uh, tap water and then applied cotton here and pushed it just enough so that a little water drift out the edge on the to the right and then clean that up just to make sure that uh, there wasn't too much water that they could make, possibly drown in or something like that. And so by exposing the cotton to the water that essentially allows the the ants to um to drink to drink from from it and, and remain um hydrated and uh generate just in general create a moist atmosphere that's beneficial to egg laying and development so then once you have your queen in there you essentially just block off the other end with um cotton and then what you're supposed to do is you're essentially supposed to just leave her in there for uh, for several weeks, um, you, you can check, you can check after a week or two to see if she's laid eggs, but, uh, you don't want to disturb her too much because otherwise that can be, uh, that can be harmful to her, uh, egg laying. She, she may, uh, refuse to lay eggs or, or even eat them if she has laid any, uh, at this stage they're pupae. So I think she's safe, but, uh, I'm disturbing her a little bit today, but we'll, we'll, uh, I'll leave her alone once we make the big move. Um, Oh, there's a worker probing around again. He's she's she's ready to go. By the way, all the uh, all the workers are uh, sterile females actually. But anyway, um, so where was where was I? Oh, okay. So you would leave her alone for about two weeks to uh, uh, to lay eggs and develop the colony. And these species is what what are called a uh, claustral ants. And so claustral ants essentially don't need. Um, don't need to go out um, and forage for food. The queens don't anyway. Uh, they they have enough uh, energy stores in, in their back muscles. So uh, the queens, uh, before they're impregnated, actually have uh, uh, have wings to fly with. And uh, once they once they uh, are fertilized, they'll uh, they usually tear out their wings and start consuming their back muscles. And so that that will allow them to sustain. They can sustain off of that for quite a while. Uh, but if you want to, and this is what I did, that's a gross little splotch down there. Uh, you can apply like a drop of honey and, and provide her some sustenance and so she can just be healthier and live longer. Anyway, I don't want to prolong this video too much just with uh, 
boring background, but that that's essentially how it goes. And and it took about a month for her to lay the eggs, have the legs, uh, eggs uh, develop into larvae, then pupae, and then eventually into these workers, as you can see here. And there's there's a good number. There are a few I haven't quite developed yet, but they're on the way. But uh, when they make the move, they'll be able to do that. So anyway, that's that's that. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, a lot of these techniques that I've used um, over the last month to get this set up was thanks to uh, two websites um, or two YouTube uh, channels. Uh, Ants Canada and Ants Australia have both been enormously helpful in setting this up. So I'd recommend you guys go, if you're interested in doing this, they definitely have a ton of information on, on ant keeping and setting them up. And I mentioned them because uh, I'm actually going to deviate a little bit uh, from what they typically do. So usually they have a pre-made setup, um, usually a bunch of tubes and, and containers uh, without any sort of digging media or, or a little digging media just for them to, um, to work around. But in this case, I'm actually doing a setup so I'm actually using a setup where it's essentially all, um, it's in a, uh, an aquarium that's essentially all sand uh, with a bit of a, what's called an outworld on the outside here for the ants to explore and, and uh, gather food and, and uh, release their, um, their waste on the out, out exterior. But the rest of it is, is all uh, digging media. It's all, um, uh, sand, it's playground sand, um, which I have experienced in the past. The Tetramorium species definitely do dig in it, so they, they will use, utilize this. Um, so that's essentially where they're going to go. Um, as you can see down here, I, I've decided to to uh, give the, the queen a bit of a push and uh, start her nest for her um, so that she'll start Digging, hopefully digging in front of the uh, in front of the glass because that's a um, that's a hard surface and pavement ants typically like to build uh, their nests against hard surfaces. So hopefully by egging her on uh, to dig there, she will and start the colony there. So anyway, so I, I've uh, I think I've talked enough. Oh oh no, actually there is one more thing. So um, so we're deviating from the norm, uh, setting up a a. Um, uh, ter terrarium uh, with sand instead of just a, a pre-made sort of thing. Uh, one thing that's important to note though, if you ever want to try this, uh, you might notice it's a bit it's a bit fuzzy near the top. That's actually uh, Vaseline that I, I smeared at the top. And uh, most ant species I've read have difficulty walking across that or dislike walking on it. So hopefully that will keep the ants from escaping if applied uh, um, applied uh, along the, the rim of the opening. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully they'll work. Otherwise, I'll have to employ some other me uh, measures like vinegar or something like that. Anyway, um, so I'm going to get to, I'm going to uh, place her in her new home and, and we'll see. It'll probably take more time for her to leave, but that will be another video. So one moment. Okay. So we're back. Uh, I placed them in and removed the uh, stopper to the cotton. So I think um, I just placed her right next to the entrance there. So hopefully, hopefully she decides to make her way down there. But we'll see if we have to egg her on. Um, but yeah, my my hope is that she'll she'll eventually start moving. Oh, that's not a very good picture. There we go. She'll eventually start moving the pupae. Uh, I think I can help egg her on by making that tunnel dark, so putting like construction paper or something like that uh, against it so that it's it's a more beneficial area because um, I don't know if the workers are entirely phased, but the queen definitely doesn't like light. Uh, so she'll try to migrate to an area that's that's moist and uh, and dark uh, just to, to she probably finds it safe and, and a, a good environment to lay eggs. But the workers, I'm willing to bet, will, will be the first ones out. We'll see how we go about it, but essentially, yep, they're starting to move. Um, yeah, essentially that's the plan, and hopefully she makes her way down there.
And I will update you guys when that happens. Sorry for the boring video, I know. You guys probably wanted to see more ants than hear me talk, but I figured uh, if you're ever interested in giving it a try, this would be an interesting tutorial. But again, it's the, the guys at uh, Ants Canada and Ants Australia that have been enormously helpful in getting this off the ground, so here's hoping that uh, this is successful. Let's see if I can get another good shot close up. Yeah. So the next video will be um, hopefully them adventuring around their new environment. So anyway, that's enough. So have a good one, guys.